Remarks of the President at a Barbecue in the High School Gymnasium of Stonewall, Texas, during the state visit of Chancellor Earhart, December 29, 1963. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for these friends from across the waters. We thank Thee for these friends and neighbors here at home. We ask Thee to bless this food, forgive our sins, save us in thy kingdom, and give us a peaceful world. Amen. Mr. Chancellor, distinguished guests, and my fellow Americans, last night at the ranch house I told Dr. Earhart that I was a politician because of tragic circumstances and fiscal necessity had forced me to turn from a politician to an economist. I spent the last month working on the federal budget. Dr. Earhart, on the other hand, is a most distinguished economist who, for other reasons, has had to become a politician. <laughs> we also have some other things in common. Uh, I went to Washington 32 years ago as a young secretary to a congressman from South Texas named Richard Clayburg, whose father had come here from Germany. So the Germans really launched me into American political life. And Dr. Earhart assured me that the Americans really launched Dr. Earhart into political life. Mr. Chancellor, on the basis of the reception here today, I hope that your people will keep you busy at home because I would not like to have you as an opponent in a free election either in Stonewall or Fredericksburg. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, in a few moments now, I'm going to turn you over to the American press. And then I think you'll know how the deer feel. <laughs> Others have been writing and talking about the new diplomacy. The chancellor and I have been practicing it. We've had a wonderful two days together. We have formed a firm and lasting friendship personally. Our talks have been full and frank and full of candor and I think have strengthened the bonds that exist between our two great countries. As I told the citizens of Free Berlin in 1961 and as I have pledged again during the last two days, we of the United States have made and intend to keep our promise that for the integrity of the people of Free Berlin, we will pledge our lives, our property, and our sacred honor. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, we have experienced a season of great shock here in America and great sorrow. But we stand before the world this morning, one nation, indivisible, under God. We work for peace as the American people have always worked. But like those pioneers who settled this land not many years ago, pioneers who came from Germany, Mr. Chancellor, came in search of peace and freedom, we of this generation Trust in the Lord and keep our powder dry. Mr. Chancellor, we shall never be too weary, never be too tired, never be too content or never too complacent to walk another mile toward peace with honor. But neither shall we be too weak or too uncertain or too unsure or too reluctant 
to defend honor or to search for peace wherever there is hope to find it. We are determined, Mr. Chancellor, that neither your children nor ours shall know war any more. But we are even more determined that never shall they wear the yoke of any tyranny. So we work for a world of peace a world of justice, a world of freedom. And we know that in this work, you of the Federal Republic of Germany are at our side a strong nation, one of the most powerful in the world, working with us, walking with us, yes, searching with us, hoping with us, praying with us, having faith with us in our success and in our yearning for peace on earth, goodwill toward all men. So as we approach uh, the conclusion of a most treasured two days together, as spokesman for two great countries, may the good God above us guard our people and guide us both, whatever the future may betide. Ladies and gentlemen, I should like for you to meet the distinguished foreign minister of Germany, Mr. Schroeder. Keen and analytical, patient and kind and courteous and courageous, one of the greatest men of our time, my strong right arm, the distinguished Secretary of State. I know that I speak for all of you when I express the depth of our feeling and our gratitude to this community and to Fredericksburg for the entertainment they furnish, particularly to this great young pianist from our own state uh, who has won such fame in all the nations of the world, Van Claburn. This little community has entertained heads of states and chancellors and presidents and camel drivers. <laughs> because we do not measure men by their power or their wealth here, we measure them by their love of freedom. Mr. Chancellor, in your country, when something is identified as old, it usually means a hundred or even thousands of years. But here in the United States, it is different. An automobile is old, for instance, in one year. A house is old sometimes in five years. A man's wife's clothes are old sometimes before they even paid for it. <laughs> But here in this part of our country, we do have one genuinely old tradition. And that is the custom, which we're keeping today, of spending Sunday with our family and with our friends and with the neighbors we love. I suspect that that is a custom brought to us from Germany. For many of the traditions which we tr treasure most such as the Christmas tree. Mr. Chancellor came from your land to our land years ago. But the finest thing that Germany has ever sent us, even including the splendid imports in which you've had a hand, 
as people. My mother came from a German family named Hoffman, which left Europe in 1848. My neighbors here have the same story to tell, as you know. But throughout America, Germans and Americans of German ancestry have played a great role in our national life. Some of them are here with us today. Werner von Braun. <laughs> if America reaches the moon in this decade and is the first to be there, it will be due more to Werner von Braun's efforts than any other living man. <laughs> just stand, stand here just a minute. Stand here just a minute. Dr. Von Braun is one of uh, our most distinguished scientists in the space field. And Mr. Chancellor, as you know, his, it is his brother that is your permanent observer today at the United Nations. Now, Mr. Chancellor, here in Texas, we do have one tradition as old as this region, and that's the giving of hats. I am told that our hats look something like those worn by apprentice carpenters in Germany. <laughs> Forty liters are 10 gallons. It's a big hat, Mr. Chancellor, for a big man and for America's good friend. <laughs> We want him to wear it for the rest of the deca decade and then put it on the moon by 1970, Dr. Von Braun. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Is Colonel Redder here? Colonel Ritter is the publisher of the Long Beach Press-Telegram in the great state of California and a major figure in American journalism. Uh, Colonel Ritter, will you come forward and let us present to you as a, one of these 40-liter hats? Colonel, I'm sorry that these fellows over at the stand don't know how to crease a hat, and I haven't had time to do it all night. <laughs> the very able and very popular foreign minister of Germany, Mr. Schroeder. Dr. Westerich, the Chancellor's economic expert and advisor, and if he's as good an economist as the Chancellor, God help us. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Carstens, the State Secretary of the Foreign Office. Mr. Von Haas, here Salinger's counterpart. And sometimes uh, in Texas, you read uh, one-eighth to be five-eighths. Mr. Von Hodge. Is Pierce Allinger here? Pierre, would you like to go over to the piano and give us a little piece while we're fitting the hat? <laughs> uh, I think I need not tell you that Mr. Salinger was... President Kennedy is a press secretary and one of the most trusted and able and loyal people uh, working for the government, and I don't know what I would do without him. And through day and night for last month... <laughs> now, Mr. Salinger, would you come up and take a bow and a hat? <laughs> On yesterday, I had a jacket that was too big for me, and I gave it to Pierre. <laughs> and today, I'm giving him a hat, and I hope that he'll remember what President Roosevelt said to Speaker Rayburn one time. He said, uh, Mr. Rayburn, my friend Sam, you're the, one of the few men I know that's been in Washington many years and still wears the same size hat. <laughs> Now, one of the good things about Pierre, he wears the same size hat he wore when he came to Washington. Thank you. Now, Ambassador Knapstein, would you please... Yes, Ambassador Knapstein, the German ambassador to the United States. <laughs> ambassador von Holben. Holben. Not here. Ambassador Von Holleben is uh, Anger Biddle Duke's uh, counterpart, the chief of protocol in Germany. Dr. Mueller, will you please come forward, and Dr. Hoffman? I don't know uh, what relation we are, but I'm some kin to Dr. Hoffman because that was my mother's name before they started spelling it Hoffman.
Dr. Mueller. Why don't you get somebody up here that knows how to... A.W., come up here and crease these hats for these boys. <laughs> I got some of these city boys up here, like Jack Valenti and <laughs> Makes the hat look a lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> Dr. Hiller and Dr. Zippy. You understand that when we uh, convert uh, their hat size to our hat size, it takes a good mathematician. <laughs> and Dorsey Hardiman didn't get out here till late today from San Angelo. Dr. Osterhelf, Dr. Kustera, Dr. Beverung, and Dr. Homan. Dr. Osterhelf first. Now, you fellas better come on because you're delaying the chancellor's uh, press conference. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. Beveron. Dr. Homan. And now, if you would indulge me, I would like to present to you uh, our Assistant Secretary of State, Mr. Tyler. Mr. Tyler, will you come up? All Texans are very proud of our distinguished uh, ambassador to the Federal Republic of Germany, a Texas boy, George McGee, Mr. Ambassador McGee. efficient man in Washington, a man that all the women like and all the men respect, Ambassador Duke. Assistant <laughs> 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 Secretary. 
Secretary of State, Mr. Manning, in charge of the press for the State Department and one of the best. Mr. Manning. And now, before we conclude, I want to... Ambassador uh, Duke reminds me that uh, we didn't give our old and beloved friend uh, Mr. Crop a hat. He got one last time he's here, but if it's worn out, let's give him another one, Jack. <laughs> He's a frequent visitor. He was here with Dr. Adenauer, if you'll remember, and we hope he comes back often. <laughs> and now, Mr. Franz uh, Hange, uh, Dean of the Bond Press. Mr. Hange. I wouldn't suggest at all that we would like to have good treatment in the German press, but we do want to suggest to the German press that we'd like to give you good treatment. And there's some hats over there. If you just won't rush, just take your time, walk over and pick out one <laughs> that fits your head and take it home with our blessings. <laughs> to say to the American press that we appreciate so much the trials and tribulations that you've gone through in the attempt to see that uh, the Chancellor and his party received uh, proper and adequate and thorough coverage. And sometime we're going to give a barbecue for the American press and we'll have some hats for you here too. Thank you very much.